today you're gonna see me try to create my first game ever using OpenAI's Codex Sandbox. So, let's just get going. Okay, so I thought I'd just start off by showing you this uh, OpenAI's uh, code completion. So basically what this is, is uh, it's in private beta now, but you can use this to code any type of programs. I like to use it mostly for Python. Anyway, today we are using this codex javascript sandbox try it out so here you just basically everything is going to be generated in uh, javascript so if i want to uh, make uh, create a red bouncing bouncing ball and just that's all i have to type submit then you can see here on the right that um, the codex is writing the JavaScript for the bouncing ball. It creates the size, it creates the colors, everything. And this you can just export straight into to HTML. So now we can see like this is the JavaScript window. You can see the balls and we can do like speed up the ball by 100%. It's very easy there's no coding required you just have to type in uh, uh, instructions and make the ball 100% bigger boom speed up the ball 1000% now should get going. So you get the point. It's very easy to work with. You don't need any coding. It's just instructions. So um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to work around with. So now I'm trying to create a game with this sandbox. Okay, so the first instruction I gave was just create a snake game. Wasn't quite sure what the codex was gonna give me. Uh, here you can see it just started to write the uh, JavaScript code and I was determined just to work with whatever I got so I think it kind of gave me a good start it was just like this really simple game uh, he, as you can see there's no border around this canvas now so I just type in solid black border around the canvas game just to so you can see where the game ends uh, and I think I tried to expand the canvas a bit so we get like a bigger playground. Then I went on to add the, you can see like this scoreboard up there. So every time you hit like a food item, you get one score. And I type in the command, if the score increases by one, then I wanted the snake speed to increase by 10. So you get this incremental level progression. So every time you eat a uh, food, the speed turns up. So it gets a bit more difficult. Next thing I did was try to add some graphics on like if the speed reaches say 80, you get this super speed level reached on the canvas. And I try to up that like for every speed level you reach, you get like a different graphical. Yeah, you can call it like a level representation. So here you can see like the super speed and I eat another ball, I get this crazy speed. So. That was kind of the idea, right? I uh, just worked a bit more on that. Uh, I think I tried to implement a few levels. Was it maybe five? Here you can see like a different version. I upped the font a bit. Uh, added some colors. So that's basically what I was working with now. Try to get some more colors in. Maybe some uh, emojis. And... I started working on trying to get like a timer. I had a lot of problems with this, but I think I figured it out in the end. Uh, it was no no way perfect, but um, I guess it was okay. It's just that the timer now, just when you start a the game, then the timer goes off. Couldn't really figure out how exactly I was going to create a good timer, but I guess if I work more on it, I will figure it out. So here you can see I have exported the JavaScript code into the JS Fiddle. 
That basically converts the code into HTML, so you can upload it to a website. And that is, was my exact plan here. I just um, copied the code, pasted it into a notebook, and did just saved it as an HTML file. Then I wanted to go over to Azure, uh, where you can create, create these free, kind of easy, static websites. My plan was just to upload the game to like these free websites. So we just created a storage account on Azure. Then you just uh, fill in the information. You choose a resource group. You give the storage account a name. I just call mine Snake. It has to be lowercase. So I just have to switch that up. Then basically it's... Yeah, yeah always choose local redundant so you won't get paid and of course standard uh, performance uh, the next steps uh, don't really worry about that I just always use the defaults and just hit um, create so the next step you have to do then is uh, since the website needs an error uh, page you just go to notepad or something just write error and just uh, save it as a 404.html so we can use this as our error page. Now we have both the snake.html and the error.html. So just go to your resource group, capabilities, click on static website. And then you have to just enable this and choose your document name, like snake.html and the error document has to be 404.html. Basically hit save and just go over to the containers, click on the web, and then you just upload uh, both of your uh, uh, HTML files. So when you have the files uploaded, just go back to container and find your, uh, your main container, click on uh, capabilities and static website, and there you have your URL. Just copy the URL, paste it into a new browser window, and there we go. The game is live. Okay, now it's time to see if I can actually complete the game and reach score 11. So let's just restart and go. So it's very important to get a, hit the first one here. Okay, I got it. So we reach super speed. Okay, that's a good start. 19 seconds. I've been practicing. I got this. Come on. Got it. We're on a crazy speed level. So fast. Jose, got it. Warp speed. Okay, eight, that was good. Okay, now we gotta collect three more food. God. Okay, we got two more. One more. Where do you go? I hate it when it's over. 84 seconds. So that was not too bad. That was one of my best efforts. So you can go ahead and try it if you want to. So that is the game. If you are going to try that the game, leave a comment below if you can beat my 84 seconds. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, I think you should watch this video where I create a podcast episode featuring two AIs having a conversation about the future. See you in the next one.